The EA and Nintendo Switch drama continues as Hot Pursuit Remastered randomly released on the eShop last night for a very short time, and there's a lot of things I want to say about this. NBA 2K21 gets a full next generation trailer and, well, to the surprise of no one, it looks stunning. And finally, should Nintendo adopt an iPhone policy with the Nintendo Switch? Some analysts say that it could be heading that way. What's going on guys? I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So of course, yesterday on the channel, we talked about EA's Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered being announced. Now this game was rumored to be coming out. There was a rating on the uh, one of the Taiwanese rating boards, I believe. So we all pretty much knew this game was coming. And honestly, the game seems pretty cool. It's budget priced at just $39.99. Racing games are fun and of course the original as in the original remaster of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit which was technically a remake of the Hot Pursuit game I don't know it's very confusing just use a different name was of course a well-received game people seem to really enjoy it so it's nice to see this game coming back of course though this is EA and the Nintendo Switch so there has to be a catch with this situation while the game is coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam on November 6, Nintendo Switch owners would have to wait a week later for the game, as the game would not be releasing on the Switch until November 13th. I sort of tried to guess as to why this was the case, but generally, I just felt that this was EA's incompetence and just treating the Switch like an afterthought like they usually do, and then it gives them a reason to cry about their games not selling on a Nintendo platform. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing about Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. The game is done! The game actually released last night on the Nintendo Switch eShop. I'm not joking. But yes, the game accidentally went up on the Nintendo Switch eShop last night, and for about an hour, people were actually able to buy and fully play the game. I'm dead serious. Now, when I heard about this, I of course went to the Nintendo Switch eShop, but unfortunately, when I tried to buy it, it was too late, and the game had been pulled, so it was back to the pre-order date for the release of November 13th so so let's recap here the, the game is done the game is legitimately completely done to the point of where it released the switch version is so done that it actually released on the switch eShop last night not on PSN and not on Xbox Live yet if you want to buy the switch version of the game you have to wait a week after it releases on other platforms I legitimately want someone to make sense of this what what is the justification here you aren't working on the Nintendo switch version of the game extra because it's done you released it you accidentally released it last night it doesn't take any longer to manufacture a physical version of the nintendo switch game either i swear like i like ea games and i don't like all ea games i'm not a blind ea hater though i do enjoy sports games i do enjoy racing games and yes ea games are riddled with microtransactions but i do think that there are some good ea games out there and at the end of the day i own all the platforms so i will buy whatever i want on whatever system i want but really, this to me is just proof that EA treats Nintendo as a secondary platform. They don't really care about it, even though they come out and say, oh yeah, we're going to up our Nintendo Switch support very soon. We're releasing a bunch of games, but you're not releasing them at the same time. And then you're going to go and complain that the game doesn't sell well. I honestly feel like this game could potentially sell better on the Switch than it does on the PS4 and the Xbox One because people are looking forward to the next generation of systems with that, while the Nintendo Switch is, of course, currently hitting its stride. It's just a very bizarre situation and I, I don't even know what to make of it at this point beyond the fact that EA just doesn't care about the Nintendo Switch and it's a shame to see because I think they would actually have some good sales on the system. So as you are well aware, I am an NBA 2K fan. The NBA is probably my favorite sport overall, and it's something I enjoy getting every year. I review NBA 2K every year, and I usually love it, but this year, this year was a little bit different. For the first time, I was not satisfied with the game. I don't mess with the My Player and Playground and the story mode and all that crap. I play the actual game of basketball. But unfortunately, after decades of having a pretty similar formula, they decided to to change the shooting mechanics in the game and they just made it absolutely horrendous. Now I have heard that the shooting mechanics in the game have gotten better with subsequent patches, but I haven't had a chance to get into it. Now one thing I was looking forward to however was the PlayStation 5 and Xbox 
Series X versions of NBA 2K21 just to see it from a visual standpoint. If you look back at the history of console releases since like the PlayStation 1 and N64 era, some of the most graphically impressive games have always been sports titles, and it really showed that next generation leap. Look at a game like NBA 2K on the Xbox to the Xbox 360, it was absolutely night and day. When I worked at GameStop, we had the Xbox version right next to the Xbox 360 version, and it was completely just mind-blowing at that time. Now, of course, we got a little teaser a few weeks ago showing Zion Williamson in the gym, but today we finally got a full trailer for NBA 2K21 on the next generation of platforms, and to the shock of no one, this game looks absolutely brilliant in terms of visuals. This crowd looks as good as some of the players on the current generation version of the game, and the players themselves within the game look absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, character models are just top-notch. Facial animations rival that of like a story-driven AAA game, and it's seriously just how insane this game looks in the first year of utilizing this new technology that we are given, which of course is laying down the groundwork for the future of sports games on next-generation consoles. Now, there is the whole fact that maybe the game plays like absolute ass like it did originally when it came out on the current generation generation of consoles, but maybe 2K has been listening to fan feedback and is fixing things. All I know is this might end up being a double dip for me. Like I said, I am a fan of sports games. I will be looking for something to play with my next generation of consoles, especially on the Xbox Series X side of things because, well, let's be realistic, there's no launch titles for that game that are specifically designed with the Series X in mind when it comes to first party games, so I will be checking out NBA 2K21 on my Xbox Series X, I'm making it official right now. And finally, the Nintendo Switch. Have we ever talked about the Nintendo Switch before on this channel? Maybe once or twice. But the Nintendo Switch, let's admit it, it's a pretty rad system, and a lot of people do like this system. And since the release of the system, we've actually seen a couple different console variations. Besides the cosmetic ones, of course, we have seen the Nintendo Switch Lite, an all-portable version of the Nintendo Switch that can't connect to your television at a cheaper price point, and a revised standard Nintendo Switch model that featured a better battery life, but no real reason to upgrade beyond that for current Nintendo Switch owners. We of course know that Nintendo is looking at cutting edge technology to prolong the Nintendo Switch's life cycle, meaning that yes, another Nintendo Switch version is coming, and most people, myself included, think that in some time in 2021, we're actually going to be introduced to a Nintendo Switch Pro style system that will allow things like upscaled visuals using DLSS technology from Nvidia. Now industry analysts are starting to look at the Nintendo Switch in a slightly different manner though. What if Nintendo abandoned the traditional console model? and went for a more iPhone-based variation instead. Now, of course, if you know anything about the iPhone, this was introduced into the market back in 2007, and there have been 11 mainline iPhone models, not including variants like smaller or bigger ones. And each of one of these is, of course, sells at very high prices, but they always sell, and they always sell out very fast, thus causing Apple to essentially make more money. Now, analyst Toen Tran thinks that Nintendo should, and potentially could, utilize a business strategy like this with a Nintendo Switch, releasing new iterations of the platform every few years instead of waiting on a traditional console generation. In an article posted over on Bloomberg, he said the following, with every console generation, the install base resets to zero, and their earnings power essentially resets to zero. Nintendo can continuously have an install base of, say, 100 million consoles out there that just moves along over time. And really, to me, this brings up a very interesting question. Could something like this actually work out? And I think it might. While people do view phones in a different manner than they do consoles, consoles at the end of the day are much cheaper than they are phones. The Nintendo Switch does use mobile technology with Nvidia powering it, and of course this is the fastest moving technology of them all. If you constantly introduce new system variations that are upgraded over previous systems, people who want the latest and greatest Nintendo Switch can pick it up, and those who are happy with the current Nintendo Switch can still get that same core experience. And it would honestly propel Nintendo into a stratosphere that, when it comes to overall hardware sales, would more than likely overtake any other system before it cumulatively. It's an interesting proposition because really, how much more can traditional console gaming really advance? When you look at the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, like they're great systems, don't get me wrong, and you're seeing advances in things like graphics and whatnot, but as far as the core experience is concerned, it's very similar to what we've seen from pretty much every console generation before it, just improvements upon that base thing. The Nintendo Switch offers something unique and different right out of the gate. It's something Nintendo should probably do with their further systems as 
far as the hybrid technology. And I think it's something we might even see Nintendo consider doing because like I said, we've already had two revisions and another one incoming more than likely within the next year. Now, of course, Nintendo themselves does like to offer different styles of gameplay experiences like we've seen with things like the Nintendo Wii. But like I said, there's really only so much you can do to make traditional gaming into a broader sphere. And I think the Nintendo Switch is the perfect system for the perfect time. So why not try to do something like this? I honestly think this could potentially work for Nintendo. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Alright guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Should Nintendo go the iPhone route and release a bunch of iterations of the Nintendo Switch? Are you absolutely floored by NBA 2K21 on next generation consoles visual standpoint? And EA and the Nintendo Switch? What, what the hell is going on with this? And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.